Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. My name is John Erskine and today I want to talk to you about the five obstacles that are preventing you from speaking English and give you some tips on how you can overcome these obstacles. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Obstacle number one. You're afraid of making mistakes. Let's face it, everyone makes mistakes. Making mistakes is part of learning. If you never make a mistake, you'll never learn anything new, different, or exciting. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, you should embrace your mistakes and look at them as opportunities to learn and to grow and to become better. Think of something that you have learned in your life. Maybe you learned how to play a piano or you learned how to sing a song that you love. When you first began, were you perfect? Of course not. You made mistakes. That's how you learned. So making mistakes is not something you should be afraid of. It's something you should embrace. It's something that you should learn from. So stop being afraid of making mistakes and understand that mistakes are part of learning. You're going to make mistakes and the more mistakes you make, the faster you're going to learn. So get out there, make mistakes, make lots of mistakes, make mistakes every day. Because the more mistakes you make, the better you're going to learn and the faster you're going to learn how to speak English. Obstacle number two, you think you don't know enough words. This is a common misconception among people who study a foreign language. People think that they need a large number of words in their vocabulary before they can speak the language. But the truth is, unless you have just started learning English like yesterday, you have enough words to speak English. The key is to use the vocabulary that you know while taking steps to increase the number of words in your active vocabulary. It's also important to remember that most people only use about 5% of the vocabulary that they know. And this is true of everybody, regardless of what language you speak. Instead of worrying that you don't know enough words, find ways to use the vocabulary that you do know in different ways. For example, if you know how to introduce yourself using the construction, Hi, my name is, for me it would be John, Hi, my name is John. Why not use that same construction, only use it to introduce a friend? Hi, his name is John. Hi, her name is Sally. So you're using basically the same construction, you're just changing the words and increasing your fluency. And that's what fluency is. Fluency is knowing how to say something and saying it without thinking about it. Another example would be, I would like a drink of water. So using the polite request, I would like something, first with a noun, I would like a drink of water, I would like a hamburger, I would like some fruit, then change it and add a verb. I would like to go shopping. I would like to go see a movie. I would like to sit here. Use the language you know. Use the word you know and play with the constructions and learn how to speak those words fluently and then increase your vocabulary and continue practicing and practicing and practicing. And before you know it, the number of words you know really won't be a problem. Obstacle number three. You forget words that you thought you knew. This seems to be a common problem with students learning a foreign language. Any foreign language, not just English. Here's the good news though. It happens to native English speakers as well. Think about it. How many times have you been talking to someone you know in your first language, in your mother tongue, and you had to stop to search for a word? The word wouldn't come. You forgot what you were going to say. It happens to all of us, and it happens all of the time. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. So what can you do? How can you overcome this obstacle so that you don't forget words so often? The best thing you can do, the simplest thing you can do, is slow down. You see, when you're trying to speak to someone in English, there are several things happening all at the same time. You're trying to remember grammar. You're trying to remember the words that you want to say. You're probably thinking about your pro pronunciation. 
you're, you may be trying to translate from your native language to English. So there's lots happening. And this creates stress and anxiety. And sometimes your brain just shuts off and you can't remember what you're going to say. So, what do you do? Slow down. Slow down, take a breath, relax, and let your brain catch up with your mouth. Think about what you're going to say and then say it. Now, when I say slow down, I don't mean talk like this. No. What I mean is slow your body down, slow your mind down, breathe, compose yourself, think about what you want to say, think about the words you want to use, and then speak. And don't worry about what the other person or people are thinking. Because most people in this situation, whenever someone stops and considers what they're going to say and pauses for a moment, most people consider that a sign of intelligence. They know that you want to say the right thing. You want to use the right words. So they don't see that as a sign of weakness. They don't see it as a sign of stupidity. They see it as a sign of intelligence. So slow down. Catch a breath. Relax. And then speak. It may be that you'll still have, from time to time, problem remembering words. But if you slow down and think about what you're going to say, it won't happen as often and you won't have as much anxiety about speaking English. So slow down. Obstacle number four, native English speaker sickness, also known as foreign language anxiety. In Korea, there's this thing called native English speaker sickness. So this is where a Korean actually feels nauseated when he or she knows that they have to speak English with a native English speaker. If they think that a native English speaker is going to approach them, their first instinct is to run away and hide. Now, this stems mostly from being afraid of making mistakes when using English. They think that the native English speaker will think badly of them if they can't speak English perfectly. So, if this is something that you experience, there is a simple cure. If you feel yourself getting sick when you're approached by a native English speaker, first, take a deep breath. Then remember that the native English speaker is there to help you. They're not there to judge you. They're not there to berate you on how well you do or don't speak English. If you make a mistake, they're not going to yell at you and they're not going to think you're a stupid person. In most cases, native English speakers will be happy that you were willing to just try to speak English. And they will think more highly of you because you tried. So I guess the simplest way to overcome this situation, to overcome native speaker sickness or foreign language anxiety, is to go back to tip number one or obstacle number one. And don't worry about making mistakes. Just speak English. Do your best. Be friendly. Try to answer any questions that might be posed to you. And just relax. Because foreign language teachers, native English teachers, are not going to yell at you. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to think badly of you. They're there to help you. So relax. And remember... We're just people, just like you. And we make mistakes just like you make mistakes. And there's no reason for you to be, or for you to have anxiety when you talk to us, when you talk to a native English speaker. Okay? So relax and you'll be fine. Obstacle number five. You don't have anyone to practice English with. Okay. So let's say you go to English class and you study hard, you're never absent, you do your best in class, you do all your homework. But when you get home, there's no one to practice with. Let's make this problem worse by imagining you're an introvert. You don't have many friends, and the friends you do have hate English and would never practice English with you. So what do you do? 
How do you increase your English fluency when you don't have anyone to practice with? Actually, this is the easiest of the five obstacles to overcome. There are a number of things you can do, but the best thing you can do is read. And I don't mean just read, but read aloud. Reading aloud has many benefits and is the best activity in the world for anyone who really wants to improve their English. So let's look at some of the benefits. When you read aloud, you're training your mouth to speak English. You're also training your ears to hear English. Reading will also help you improve your vocabulary faster than any other activity you can do. People who read have better speaking skills. They are better writers and they're better at communicating their thoughts. In fact, if you think about it, reading aloud will help you overcome all of the obstacles we have discussed in this video. So, what should you read? Read things you enjoy. For example, if you like mysteries, read mystery novels in English. Do you like keeping up with current events? Read English newspapers. Do you like superheroes? Read graphic novels in English. Do you like TV dramas? Read scripts from your favorite TV shows and movies in English. What you read really isn't important as long as it's something you enjoy reading. What is important is that you read aloud. You need to hear yourself speaking the words. And if you really want to help yourself, get a tape recorder or a sound recorder, use your smartphone and record your English and then listen back to it and read again, record again and try to improve your pronunciation. So reading aloud is probably the best thing you can do to help improve your English and you don't need anybody with you to do it. You can do it all by yourself. So, you don't have anyone to practice with? That's okay. Get a book and start reading aloud. Okay, so let's recap. The five most common obstacles to speaking English and how to overcome them. One, making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes help you learn. Two, you don't know enough words. Practice using the vocabulary you know in creative ways and just practice what you know. Three, you forget words you know when you try to speak English. Slow down and relax. Think about what you want to say. Four, native speaker anxiety. Remember, native speakers are not going to judge you. They're there to help you. Five, no one to practice with. Read aloud. Read, read, read. I cannot say that enough. Read. Read English every day. Okay, so there you have it. If you follow the advice I gave in this video, you'll have fewer problems speaking English and you'll be able to speak English more often and more fluently. Do you have questions? Leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Also, leave comments and let me know what you think of my videos. I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, hit the like button and share it with your friends and classmates. If you're not a subscriber, click on the logo that you should see on your screen and become a subscriber. Also, turn on the notifications so you'll know when I post new videos. And, as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.